Hey everyone, in this lecture, we're gonna be proving this statement. Prove using mathematical induction that two to the n is greater than n for all integers n greater than or equal to zero. And for this proof, we're going to let p of n be two to the n gr is greater than n. I wanna mention a couple things right up front. Usually, this is one of the first problems that students encounter when they're first applying mathematical induction. And so because of that, I wanna go this, through this problem extra slowly so that I can explain each step and why it exists. So first off, we have P of N. In this white box that you see here, what does this white box say if P of N is two to the N greater, is greater than N? Well, this just says, prove using induction that P of N for all integers N greater than or equal to zero. So I want to clarify, the thing in the white box is not P of N. The thing in the white box is not P of N. P of N is contained inside of this, this statement, not the other way around. Now, usually students have a decent grasp at figuring out what P of N is. I'm not concerned about that. It's the induction step that a lot of students struggle with the most. We'll get there and it will make sense, hopefully. So... How do we prove this using mathematical induction? So to do that, we first have to start with a base case. Now, I'm gonna solve this problem a little bit differently than most people because I want, I want you to use mathematical induction out of necessity. I want you to feel like you have to, right? And this is, this is possible, this is very possible. So follow along. Let's take a look at P of zero. What is P of zero? Well, this says two to the zero is greater than zero. Is P of zero true? Well, let's check. Uh, that means that one is greater than zero. Yeah, that looks, that looks true. P of zero is true. So we just show that P of zero is true. We are one step closer to proving that P of N is true for all N greater than or equal to zero. Okay, one step closer. Let's go to the next step. The next step is P of one which says that two to the one is greater than one. Is this true? Well, this just says two is greater than one, which is true. Good. We're one step closer to the truth. Let's go to the next one. P of two. This says that two squared is greater than two. Let's verify that. That just says four is greater than two. Yes. Good, good, good. Well, I'm getting tired and bored, are you? right? We're, we're going to be here all day, forever, right? There are a lot of integers that are greater than or equal to zero. And so we're never going to prove with absolute certainty with this method. This method is not going to work. So let's try something new. Let's try to prove that P of three is true without actually doing any calculations. We're not going to plug in anything into here. We're, gonna, we're not going to be plugging in three. We're going to try to prove that P of three is true without plugging in three. How can we do that? Well, we know, we know for certain that this is true. We know for certain that this is true. And we know for certain that this is true, right? We just showed those three things. We know that those are true. Can we get to the next truth without plugging in three? And technically, what's really cool about mathematical induction is you're only allowed to use this one. We're gonna try to build the statement P of three from this statement somehow. So we're not gonna verify, we're not gonna plug in three into, into P of N. We're gonna try to manipulate what we just circled here to show that P of three is true without actually plugging in anything to our calculator. We're just going to take something that we know is true and we're going to try to prove that P of three is true from that truth of P of two. How do we do that? Well, this is where things get a little weird, but work with me. We know this is true. We know this is true. I want to somehow show that two cubed is greater than three from this. How can I do that? This is where it gets weird. I'm going to add two squared to both sides. I can do that. I'm allowed to do that, right? That's the thing about inequalities. You can add something to both sides and it works. 
So that means that two squared plus two squared is greater than two plus two squared. Here's the important point I wanna really emphasize, and this is the thing I really want you to focus on, okay? This is the thing I want you to focus on. This right here, I want you to convince yourself that that statement is true. You don't need to check it. You don't need to check it. Why is this statement true? Well, we know, we know with 100% certainty that two squared is greater than two. We know that. And we followed the, the math rules and we just manipulated that to get this final outcome so that we don't need to check or verify anything. Now, let's keep going. Two copies of two squared. Think of it that way. And the, and the right hand side is two plus two squared. But, and this is something important, I just want to emphasize that two to the n over here, just keep this in mind, two to the n is greater than or equal to one. You get to make this assumption in this proof. Your instructor will allow you to do this. You have to do this technically. Uh, now you can prove that with mathematical induction. We won't do that in this, in this uh, lecture, but you get, let's just assume that you get that tool. You get to assume that two to the n is greater than or equal to one for all n greater than or equal to zero. This is right here. This is greater than or equal to two plus two squared, which is greater than or equal to one. So I can just replace a one here. And this is true. Notice here, two times two squared, we just increment the exponent by one because that's the law of um, exponents. So this is two cubed is greater than something, which is greater than or equal to three. Whoa, 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 whoa. This just says that two cubed is greater than three. It's like magically we just proved that P of three is true. We just proved, look at that. We just proved that P of three is true without checking, without even checking. Can we do that for P of four? Like what if I want to show that P of four is true without checking? How would I do that? Well, let's try this again. And here's where it gets interesting. We're gonna eventually generalize this process and by generalizing it, we'll actually be able to invent or create mathematical induction. That's the, that's the process here, but we'll get there. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Right now, I just want you to be amazed that we just solved that. We just found that P of three is true without, without checking, without plugging in three for N. Cool, we use some weird voodoo math. Let's do it again. Let's add, this time I'm gonna add two cubed on both sides. Why that number? I'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. But all I want you to know is that I'm doing some legal moves here. This is, I'm allowed to do this, right? I can do this. So this left-hand side is two copies of two cubed and the right-hand side is two cubed plus three. Cool, so by the law of exponents, this just means I increment by one. So the left-hand side is two to the fourth power. And the right-hand side is, oh, well, it's not four, but check this out. Remember how I said that two to the n is greater than or equal to one for all n greater than or equal to zero? Well, two cubed is greater than or equal to one. So this is, greater than or equal to one plus three, which is four. And lo and behold, we have two to the fourth power is greater than four. Or if you wanna compress that, this is still true. Two to the fourth power is greater than four. We just proved that without plugging in four for n. We did not check what two to the fourth power is. Two to the fourth power is 16. Do you see a 16 anywhere in here that I, that I explicitly used? No, but I mean, you do see this explicit two cubed and this explicit test, this explicit jump right here. Those are the two steps that might throw you off, right? You might, you might be confused. And if you are, that's totally understandable. I'll, I'm gonna explain how we get there. Now I'm realizing that I'm still proving P of three is true, P of four is true, P of five is true. And this is going really, really, really long. It's, I mean, this video is, it's, 
going to be a really long video if we keep doing this, right? So how do we solve this? How do we generalize this process? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start over. And this time we know that P of zero is true. We showed that earlier, but um, this time I'm going to prove a new statement. I'm going to prove that if K is some random specific integer, that's a natural number. And P of K is true. Then P of K plus one is true. So we were doing that earlier one step at a time for P of three. I did this weird thing, right? I did these weird steps from P of two using P of two, using P of two, which we know is true. We, we just, we saw is true. And then using legal moves, we showed that P of three is true. And so since P of three is true, we do this weird move and we show that P of four is true. This is just P of four. But this time we proved P of three and P of four without verifying. We did no verification, right? We did some fancy math instead. We did a different step instead. So this right here is the generalization of that process. So let's let K be an arbitrary natural number. It could be zero. It could be one. It could be two. It's not all of them. It's just one of them. K is a natural number, a natural number, not all of them, a natural number. We're going to show that regardless of what you pick for K, we can prove then that P of K plus one is true. Now, how can we do this? Well, the way we can do this is we can figure out what is P of K. So we're going to uh, take a look at P of K. P of K is two to the K is greater than K. So a court, if we want to prove that this is true, which is the second step of mathematical induction, this is the induction step. This is the step a lot of people have a problem with. We're generalizing, we're generalizing this process of verification. We're verifying the next step without actually computing the next step. So we're using the previous step and some math to get to the next step. So to go from zero, P of zero to P of one, we take P of zero, we do some math to it, and we get P of one. To go from P of one to P of two, we start with P of one and we somehow build P of two. We're, not, we're no longer plugging in for N. We're starting with P of zero and building from that to get the next one, to get the next one, to get the next one. And we generalize that process and prove them all at the same time. So here's how we do that. Here's how we do that. We're gonna assume that P of K is true. Now you might say, isn't this assuming your conclusion, right? No, we're assuming that the conclusion is true for one specific K. I don't know what that K is. It doesn't matter who cares, but for that one specific K for just this one time, just this one, one K, we're just going to assume it's true for that one. What does that mean? What does that imply? Right? What does that mean? So if P of K is true, that just means that two to the K is greater than K is true. So we get that for free. We get that two to the K is greater than K. We want to show that P of K plus one is true. We're not just going to check it. We're not going to just look at two to the K plus one is greater than K plus one and say, yeah, it looks good. I guess we're not going to verify anything. We can't verify anything because we don't even know what K is. So we, we can't plug and chug anymore. That's not going to help. We don't know what K is. So because of that, we have to use the other method, the, the, the weird method I showed earlier. We have to somehow build P of K plus one from P of K. So let's take P of K, the thing we know is true. Two to the K is greater than K. We get to assume that this is true for just some random K. It doesn't even matter what it is. I'm gonna prove that the two, uh, P of K plus one is true from this. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add two to the K on both sides. Okay, so this gives me two to the K plus two to the K is greater than K plus two to the K. And so again, this combines to 
two times two to the K is greater than K plus two to the K. And while we're here, this is greater than or equal to K plus one, right? We can replace this, this with just a one and we get a lower value because again, two to the K is greater than or equal to one. Don't forget that. For all k greater than or equal to zero, you get to assume that. On the left hand side, this is just 2 to the k plus 1. So this just says that 2 to the k plus 1 equals something, which is greater than this number, which is greater than or equal to k plus 1. And this means that 2 to the k plus 1 is greater than k plus 1. We just proved that p of k plus 1 is true that's not a check mark we just verified that it's true without even plugging in k plus one we didn't need to we don't need to plug in k plus one and verify that it's true because we just did without even plugging it in we took p of k did some fancy math right we did weird math which i'll get to in a moment and then we arrived at p of k plus one we showed that p of k plus one was true we didn't even need to test it. It was just a result of some fancy mathematics that we did with P of K. And so K could have been any arbitrary number. And this, this step would generalize. It's, it's a generalization of what we were doing earlier, which was constantly adding to like two squared when it was two squared or adding two cubed when it was two cubed to both sides. Now, why did I pick that, right? What what was the motivating factor to just randomly decide two cubed? This is where what's called heuristics comes into play. This is the part where I have to tell you that this is just a matter of playing with numbers in math, kind of. So there's this thing called heuristics with proving that you should be very familiar with. Heuristics are those strategies, tactics that you immediately jump to when you're solving math problems or whatever problems you're doing. So I have some heuristics that I've built over time because I've played with mathematical induction. And so I know to add two cubed here because I've seen this problem before and because it would take me some time to figure that out. But, but after my instructors gave me those hints, after a while, I started catching on. I started figuring out what that secret is. And you have to figure out the secret. That's the hard part. That step to add 2 to the k on both sides. And the step to show that 2 to the k is greater than or equal to 1 to get this, this result. It looks like luck, doesn't it? It looks like that until it becomes a heuristic. And eventually, it literally becomes kind of like second nature. Now understand that I went from point A to point B with, with just a continuous line here, right? There was no, there was no like, oh, dang, I forgot. I, I, I messed that up, right? You're going to encounter those. You're going to, you're going to add two on both sides or add one on both sides and try that. You're going to try things and it's not going to work. But the goal that I want you to try to give yourself is pick a, an N like three or five or 10, verify that that's true. And then verify the next P of N go up, go to one step further to get to, if you're at P of 10, then try to prove P 11 is true using the, the truth that, that you got from showing that P of 10 is true. So do what I'm doing here but pick any random value for n, verify that first using your calculator, and then try to get to the next step using some fancy math rules. Then figure out what it is that got you to the next step and generalize that process. I understand that's a lot to ask a student, right? That's a lot to ask. But this is like the one thing that is absolutely needed to solve many problems in mathematics. I mean, if you consider the axioms that mathematicians use, they use what's called the ZFC axioms. And the C corresponds to the axiom of choice. 
And the axiom of choice is logically equivalent to the well-ordering of principle, which is logically equivalent to mathematical induction. You kind of need mathematical induction. And that's where we run into this, this problem. We've taught you everything that you need to know without using mathematical induction. Here you are. You have to face it at some point. This is a monster. It's going to be hard. It, but with practice comes perfect. I should, I should wrap this up. I said, I should say, so P of K implies P of K plus one is true, right? Because by assuming P of K, I can manipulate it. I can therefore prove that P of K plus one is true. So if that's true and I should put a comma there and P of zero is true. And this, by the way, uh, for an any arbitrary k. Now, why for any arbitrary k? I thought we picked a very specific k and proved this statement, right? Well, k was just a random placeholder for whatever you want to pick, right? You could you could do this process by assuming p of k is true you can do this process with any arbitrary thing you plug in for k like k equals zero k equals one k equals two it doesn't matter they're all this this process would still be true and p of k would still imply that p of k plus one is true so it's not just k it's all k since k is just a general arbitrary placeholder for whatever positive or integer you want to plug in that's greater than or equal to zero then by this is where you ha you have to have this in your proof then by mathematical induction p of n is true for all n i should say n greater than or equal to zero so we showed that P of zero is true. Well, P of zero implies P of one is true. Well, P of one implies P of two is true. Well, then P of two implies P of three is true. Well, if P of three is true, that means P of four is true. But, but if P of four is true, then P of five is true. But that means that if you see what's, what happens here, it's a domino effect that we just completely, like we, we completely solved every single step because we generalized all these steps. And so you can say, well, just rinse and repeat forever. So therefore P of a thousand is true because I can just keep going. And eventually I'll say that P of 1000 is true because P of one P of 999 is true. Therefore P of 1000 is true. Therefore P of 1001 is true. Therefore it just keeps going. It goes on forever. They're all, they all must be true. I don't need to sit here and say that, because P of zero is true, P of one is true. Because P of one is true, that means that P of... I don't need to sit here and go through every single number to get to whatever N value you give me, right? That's a waste of my time. Let's let the imagination do that, right? But I can do that. And you can imagine me going through this and a thousand times and proving that P of 1000 is true. Because P of, P of 999 is true. So that's mathematical induction. I highly recommend you watch this video multiple times. I hope it helped. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.